In the name of God, the Compassionate, the Merciful. This semester, I am going to in introduce something quite differently from what we had previously last semester. During the last semester, we introduced uh, a Chomskyan approach to the study of language. But this semester, we are going to be non-Chomskyan. So, this is something quite different from what we had earlier last semester. This is one difference. You, you remember last semester we worked on I-language approaches and E-language approaches. I-language approaches were something internal side of language, okay? Uh, we studied internal side of language. For E-language approach, we look at outside elements, uh, which are in fact uh, working within uh, the language. So we are working with E-language approach, which looks at external elements like soci sociology, like society, etc., etc. So it is an external language approach when we look at uh, discourse and pragmatics. Of course, the name of the course is discourse analysis, okay, discourse analysis. But we are going to have a bit further to study not only discourse and pragmatic, this, not only discourse analysis, but we are going to work with pragmatics as well. So we include something like pragmatics into our consideration because Many teachers of English, many teachers of English are interested in these two fields. One is discourse analysis, the other is pragmatics. And we want to help you, in fact, with the idea that many parts of language teaching, many parts of language teaching actually deals with these two, in fact, areas of study. One is discourse analysis, the other is pragmatics. So that's why we have discourse and pragmatics in one book, in one textbook. You know, the name of the textbook, as you actually see it here, is uh, pragmatics and discourse, and it is written by Joan Carling. Okay, this is a very uh, simple introduction to the field of discourse analysis and to the field of pragmatics. Uh, well, maybe you remember part of the last semester's program was discourse and pragmatics uh, in two different chapters. I suppose it was chapter 11 and chapter 12 of the George Yule that we st you studied last semester. Now we want to work with this discourse and pragmatics course uh, in order to understand the nature of language better. Okay, so to begin with, we have to go to, in fact, uh, deal with the book. The book has got four different parts, uh, which appears as A, part A, part B, and part C. C and part D. When you look at the contents uh, on page table of the contents, uh, you see an introduction, which is part A. Okay, part A is an introduction. Part B of the book actually is the development of the same idea that we had uh, in chapter one. Okay, and after that we have a uh, exploration in on part C of the book and finally the extension which is part of the D part D of the book so uh, to begin with we have to go to table of contents uh, there are of course two table of contents one is on uh, uh, the first page of the table of content and but actually when you go to the second pages and third pages, page two and three of the table of the contents, you see that uh, there is an extended, uh, uh, in fact, the table of contents with cross-referenced, which is cross-referenced. 
Anyway, the book is very interesting for language teachers. It is for uh, interesting for language teachers, and actually, it appears to be very easy for you to develop an, an understanding of uh, pragmatics and discourse. So let us go to um, page one. Okay. So on page one, actually, you see that we have something like uh, an introduction appears on top and concepts in pragmatics and discourse and uh, we have to begin with okay in this chapter actually we are going to have a good understanding of context okay and the understanding concepts are like this number one introduction number two situational context Number three, uh, cultural and interpersonal background knowledge. And number four is uh, ex exophora, diaxis, and intertextuality. We are going to begin with the first paragraph, page one, paragraph one. What is it? Introduction to pragmatics and discourse. Okay. Let us see what the book begins with. Line 1 says, uh, One of the approaches to language description that are described in this book involve, involve both pragmatics and discourse analysis. Okay? Others involve either one or the other. Actually, uh, maybe one approach actually deals with only pragmatics and other books are the, in fact, uh, analyses could uh, uh, work with the other, let's say, discourse analysis. If it is the first one is pragmatics, the second one is discourse analysis. Anyway, but some books actually develop both as one thing both discourse analysis and pragmatics as one thing. This book actually has got the merit of uh, having the two things together in one package for you, okay? In order for you to understand what we mean by uh, pragmatics and discourse, we have to, in fact, uh, see what is it when we say discourse or pragmatics as opposed to other areas of language. Okay? So line three of the first paragraph says, the first section of this unit defines them. What is it? Defines uh, pragmatics and defines discourse analysis and should serve as a reference guide for all the units of this book. So, if you want to uh, develop the first section, if you actually understand the first section, as I told you, uh, you could use it in other parts of the book. In order for you to see what is pragmatics and what is not, we are going to have three different in fact, analogies, okay? Well, first of all, we say what, it, what we mean by discourse analysis as opposed to syntax. What is number two is something like this. Number two is something like this, that we say what is semantics and what is not. What, what is semantics, number two, as opposed to, again, our discourse analysis and pragmatics. And finally, we go to pragmatics, okay? So, we have to begin with the, these three questions, okay? Comparison between syntax and discourse analysis and pragmatics. Two, comparison between semantics and discourse analysis and, and pragmatics. And finally, we go to the pragmatics itself and uh, discourse analysis itself. So, the second paragraph wants to say what is discourse analysis, but the book looks at 
the syntax. Let us see. Line one says, first let us look at what they are not by using an example. What is discourse analysis? What is not discourse analysis? What is pragmatics and what is not? We use one real example, okay, by using an example. In Queen Victoria's famous words, we are not amused. We are not amused. We want to look at this sentence. We want to look at this sentence by Queen Victoria and compare it to the, three, the two approaches that we have. Syntax, semantics, and finally, discourse analysis and pragmatics. Okay, let us see. Syntax or the grammar actually deals with things like, like, for example, we, line one, line two, well, according to the syntax, we is the noun phrase subject of the sentence containing first person plural, okay? We is first person plural, okay? After we, we have R. What is R? R is the main verb agreeing with we. So we say we are. We don't say we is. We am. Okay? We say we are. So with the verb, uh, the verb which is R agrees with the subject we according to the syntax. Okay? We are. After we are, we have not, and after that, amused. Let us see. Not, according to the grammar, is a negative marker. And amuse is an adjectival complement. It's an adjectival complement. So the result is that we have, we are not amused. We are not amused. Well, when we look at the sentence from the perspective of syntax, we have these types of elements. I'm just repeating it. We is a pronoun, okay, uh, which actually acts as the subject of a, let's say, sentence. And after that, we have the verb. And after that, we have something like not, which is a negative marker. And after that, we have a special type of verb, which is a adjectival complement. Okay? The result is something like this. We are not amused. This is the way we look at language from a syntax point of view, from a grammatical point of view, from a structural point of view, from Chomskyan, let's say, point of view. Done. What is semantics now? What is semantics? The next paragraph actually says what is semantics. Again, the writer looks at this sentence. We are not amused. So let us go to the second paragraph. Returning to the Queen Vic Victoria's example, if we analyze the meaning of her words in isolation and say that we indicates person speaking. Okay, we are going to understand the meaning here, not the structure. Earlier, just now, we worked on the structure. Now we want to work on the meaning, okay? So, we indicate the, the person speaking. R identifies a state rather than an action, you know. R is a verb, but actually Arabic doesn't have it. Why? Because Arabic says that R is not something like an action. So Arabic actually does not include a verb like are. Why? 
because it is simply not an action. Some languages are like Arabic, others are not like Arabic. For example, Farsi is not like Arabic. It's like English and it has includes something like to be, okay? Different, uh, in fact, uh, forms of to be, okay? So, which is are here. Anyway, we indicate, well, are identifies a state rather than an action. So, when you say verb, there are two types of verbs, uh, state verbs and action verbs. State verbs like to be and action verbs like to go, okay? Now, this is a, uh, let's say, uh, this is a, let's say, uh, semantics uh, point of view, okay? So, we are going to commune, uh, com continue, okay? Amused, line three of the third paragraph says, has a sense synonymous with entertained, okay? Semantics deals with the meaning. So, we here we work with the meaning which is synon a synonym. It's a good synonym for it is entertained or distracted. Okay, in line three. Okay, we are looking at semantics then. So, syntax looks at the structure of the sentence, semantics looks at the meaning of the sentence. Done. What about? pragmatic sentence course. Remember, Queen Victoria said something like this, we are not amused. We looked at it from the syntax point of view. Again, we looked at it from the pragmatic, uh, well, uh, semantics point of view. But let us see what happens when we study pragmatics and discourse. Let us move to the Paragraph one, two, three, four. Paragraph four. Okay, let us see. Moving on to pragmatics and discourse analysis, we can start by saying that they are approaches to studying language relation, uh, languages relation to external background features. You know, Chomsky calls them as something external to the field of language. I language. E language. Okay? That's why. We are looking at external elements. Let us see. They would take into account the fact that in the example, Victoria had been in a prolonged depression. Prolonged depression. Okay? Caused by the death by the demise of her husband, Albert. So, her husband dies and he is, she is in, the, uh, in a depression, kind of depression. And her courtiers know this. Those who are around him in the court know that uh, Queen Victoria is in a kind of depression. Okay? And her words were a response to a joke they had, like the next page, they had just made. They made a kind of joke in order for Queen Victoria to be entertained. Okay? There was a kind of joke made by the courtiers in order for, in order for, the, in fact, uh, the courtiers to be able to make fun, make something like fun, and uh, Queen Victoria is out of her depression. That's why she says, she says uh, we are not amused. So it means that your joke was not a good joke today. Your joke was not a good joke today, okay? And her courtiers know this, and uh, the words were, were a response to a joke they had made, okay? They had just made. Analysts would infer that the queen's intention was to stop them from uh, trying to make her laugh. They wanted to her to laugh but she said 
I am actually, I have lost my, in fact, dear husband, Albert. I'm not going to laugh. Okay? They wanted to make her laugh, but she didn't. Okay? That's why we look at semant pragmatics and discourse. Pragmatics and discourse says these types of things external to the syntax, external to the semantics of language. It is uh, the, in the realm of, the field of, in fact, uh, uh, the domain of uh, pragmatics and discourse analysis. The field of discourse analysis. The field of pragmatics. Okay? So, it's like this. And her statement, line two, implies a reminder that she has, has to be respected as a queen okay when you say we are not amused you say that they are going to work with you in order to for you to understand what is this so pragmatics and discourse analysis have much well uh, uh, this is the field of pragmatics and discourse uh, well semantics looks at the meaning of the sentence, syntax looks at the structure and the grammar of the sentence, but pragmatics and discourse look at these external elements, the demise of the husband and courtiers. Let's say uh, the queen herself, etc., etc. So this is the field of discourse analysis and pragmatics so the la third line of the page says pragmatics and discourse analysis have much in common they both study context text and function in my la next presentation i am going to in fact work with what we mean by these elements like uh, context text and function in pragmatics and discourse. Thank you very much for your listening.